if people have an, a, a job from the state, they're going to squeeze out more money from us, which is bad. And Content if mafia. Hi everyone and welcome to this second preview stream for Imperator Rome. Awe, awe everyone. I'm Rod, community manager for uh, Imperator and with me again, Johan, the game director. How are you doing, Johan? Yeah, I'm pretty fine. It's a Tuesday afternoon and we're going to be playing uh, Egypt in yes. Imperator. And this time we'll take it a bit slower. We've heard the feedback, so we're going to kick it down a notch just so everyone gets everything that's going on on the screen. In Babylon, 18 years ago, the Argead king Alexander died suddenly at the age of 32. In the five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The shock of Alexander's early death and his lack of a chosen successor sent shockwaves throughout the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentates. <laughs> Weird word. Sorry, I'm French. Styled as the... Diadochi, I think that's the word. Diadochi, Diadochi. Yeah, well, it's Greek originally, so I can't ah. spell it. For the many years, they and their successor have been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence into the conflicts. The wars of the Diadochi will surely continue. Perhaps it is up to Egypt to decide how they will end. And Egypt, oh, right. and Egypt they're like one of the oldest countries in the world. And... They have this, this interesting geographical position. You have the Nile, the green thing where most people live, and mm -hmm. then there are deserts on the border. To the south, the Nile ends, and it's deserts and mountains to the south. To the east, you have deserts. You have a natural border here, the Sinai Desert, and up to the Palestines. Yep. You have deserts to the west, and to the north, it's the sea, giving it a really, really interesting position. Holy Some of them hell. have like names you recognize. We have Babylon here, and they have Memphis. You recognize those names. Uh, yeah, but Memphis isn't that uh, in Tennessee or something in, <laughs> in the Yeah, US? it's it's named after this. This is one of the old capitals of Egypt. Okay, cool. I can see that there are roads even there. It's not just the uh, Romans that have had roads. These are older roads, far older. They were built long before the first Roman ancestors escaped from the sacking of Troy. Okay, so Romans do not have the monopoly on building no, roads. No, uh, okay. more people can build roads. The Roman legions can build roads faster and better than anyone else, but most people can build the roads. Right. So let's go to Alexandria, which is the capital. It's a fairly new built city, built by Alexander. He actually didn't build the city himself. So Alex Alexandria is one of those interesting places. It's a Greek city. Okay. You notice the graphics uh, of the city buildings here look different than the ones here because this is uh, populated primarily by Macedonians, which is a Hellenistic culture group. The citizens are uh, most of them Hellenic Macedonians, some, some Jewish Hebrews and some Phoenicians. They're probably traders or something. So citizens, so the, the population within cities have different cultural backgrounds. They yeah. have a single one. Yeah, and different types. If you're looking here, this is a new thing that we haven't shown before, is that you can see at a quick glance, the citizens here are satisfied, they're kind of happy. Okay. Uh, the freemen are satisfied. The tribesmen are unhappy. They're not causing a rust, but they're unhappy. Okay. Not that there are any tribesmen here. So I've there seen. are none for, for yeah. now. The slaves are unhappy as well, but... Uh, Okay, so happiness, how does that impact the game? If happiness is lower than 50%, the unrest is growing and the people and they will be unhappy. So if there's unrest, that means that that could lead to potential revolts. Yeah, civil wars or revolts. If you get a civil war, you'll split and you'll fight over this So game. it's not like in Europa Universalis. It's no, a completely it's different Completely way. different. Okay. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit cool. later. Awesome. But happiness also impacts how well the pops work. Okay. And you can make them happy with the different ways. You can get like different trade goods. Wine makes people happy. Okay. Uh, access to food is also makes people slightly happier. Yeah, I mean wine and for sure. Uh, food, it's good to have some in your belly. So the use here, they're not um, not that happy because they're not Hellenistic in a Hellenistic country. So let's go back to Alexandria. You can see that we have here a special modifier there because this uh, Alexandria, a unique, cool city, increases the civilization value. Okay, nice. There's uh, 45 pops in Alexandria. That's quite a lot. That's a large city. But it's not even the largest city in the Western Delta. That's the Naucratis. Hermopolis Micra has 40. Yeah, there's a lot of people there. Wow. But it, no Alexandria can oh. grow further because there's a lot of grain here. We stacked grain to give like plus 30% population growth just from that trade goods. We also have access to fish that gives another 
plus 10% total. Do you have any other trade goods that do that aside from grain and fish or? Uh, you have livestock as well. They can also give you a population growth. Let's go to the overview and look a bit about the country. So uh, here, this is where you have like the main information about the country. Yeah, and okay. there's a lot of people in Egypt. It's a huge uh, population. Lots and lots of different provinces there with lots of cities each and the population numbers are absolutely staggering. Oh wow, Memphis. Uh, we want to pick national ideas. Okay. Because uh, we have a nice bonus that are here but okay. we're not getting it because we don't have matching ideas. Oh, so if you have matching ideas you will unlock every single line of bonus that you have right there. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and that, that is shitloads of power Oof. of various types. So we That's really, really good. want that one. That's really, really good. We have three different slots here. One for military ideas and two for oratory. We can of course pick other ideas if we really want them, but then we're not getting this bonus. So we have to think about like, do we want the bonuses or not? And I'm going, yes, I want the bonuses. Okay. One interesting little strat strategic little thing here is that these bonuses that you're getting here, Egypt is a large country. We are a great power. So our government bonus is 200%. 200%. So we're getting uh, a small little nation would just get plus one, plus one, plus, plus one. one. For those that don't know, in the game you will have different a ranking system for powers, right? Going yeah. from local power to... Uh, City-state, local power, regional power, major power and great power. Awesome, okay. And great and power increases your diplomatic range also? And we don't have time to explain every single um, thing today. We'll cover but it we'll, later. we'll know that people are going to take screenshots of this one and analyze it into detail. There we go. Let's pick a military one. We have three different ones available okay others that can unlock later we can get ordered retreat which increases the reorganization cost because when you have fought a battle or uh, taking losses yes or low morale your uh, manpower is going to slowly trickle back to your unit it's far slower than in other games so you have an ability where you can like focus this group to recover morale and manpower quicker oh nice so but that, that one costs uh, some uh, power oh, right. on your unit to toggle on and this will draw from the pool of manpower that we have above yeah. there uh, at 86 at the top of the screen. Yeah. So, okay. We can have cheaper triremes, which is the ships. There's only basically one category of ships. It has a bunch of oars. I was convinced that they were uh, only Roman triremes. No, the okay. Greek triremes and everyone. Then you have morale of your armies. I'm going to pick the morale one because I like that one. So the morale is when you have a fight between two armies, you uh, will yeah. lose morale. So your army will be more resilient. Yes. Okay. We're going to look at the oratory ones. We can have one that decreases the corruption of all the characters in my country each month, which is good. So the corruption is... Uh, how does the corruption mechanic works in the game, basically? Uh, corruption basically makes so that if people have an, a job from the state, they're going to squeeze out more money from us, which is bad. Um, God damn, Mafia! Uh, not the mafia, they're just entitled people. Oh, Jesus. Then you, they also like squeeze out the local populace if they're governors and you don't want your ruler to become corrupt because uh, that has some other drawback because if the ruler turns corrupt, uh, your power costs is going to increase in oh, your wow. country. Okay. So it's not really Oof, all that good. You want to steer clear from that. Yeah. Military tradition cost, we talked about that in the last stream. Yes, we did so, tackle it. And diplomatic relations plus one. Yeah, which means that we can ally with one more country or so, which is kind of like bad. cool. So we still have two slots of oratory power to get the bonus. Which one are, we, are you going to pick right there? I'm picking the cheaper military edition. I'm going to save us a lot of military power. Because they cost what, like 800 something yeah, like 800 that? Yeah, 800 something like that. And then it's like one more diplomatic relation or uh, corruption. I'll go with the corruption yeah, because we're Egypt, we're a great power. We we can already have a lot, bunch of yeah, a bunch of diplomatic relations for sure. So, so so I have a little question for you. Do you think we can have a scaling UI in Imperator? Yeah, that's the plan at least. Well, that's good to know. There you go, chat. So yeah. it's doable. So let's take a look at the ruler Ptolemy. Okay. Well, he's one of the uh, generals, Alexander's friend. So mm -hmm. all of those like that were. Alexander's heirs or friends, they have the special blood that their uh, children win, uh, inherit and grow up. His son has a blood of Lagidae. This little baby is also blood of Lagidae. A strong baby right there. All of these bloods have different abilities. This one mm -hmm. is like uh, the wrong culture group happiness that gives you plus 15%, uh, which means that the youth will be happier with him. Oh, so that's pretty cool. That's why actually the minorities that we have in our cities are fairly happy. Yes. Pretty nice. We get a little bit more research, a little bit seal, and of course, people with that uh, 
blood, they're more prominent. He's got some friends in other countries, this ruler as well. He's got Seleucus, the Basileus of the Seleucid Empire. I never thought that Egypt would be a friend of the Seleucid. He's a friend because these two guys fought that guy. He's the Basileus of Phrygia. Okay. Which is the, and Basileus stands for, it's like uh, king? Yeah, Greek king. There's a lot of different interactions here you can do with this guy. You can mm. actually force him to become a Kemetic religion instead of Hellenic if we ever wanted to. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at the alerts at the top of the screen. We nice. can have another trade route. Okay. So let's uh, go and import some wood if we can. Because so... we, w we want to have wood so we can build ships. Oh, okay. So because we have food, no access trirings. to ships. So we'll just import from uh, our friends, the uh, Selekids. Our army has no leader. We can go back to that later when we do our starting strategy as Egypt. Okay, no problem. The Sostenids or whatever, they're feel scorned. Okay, so we have the Scorn family that we also saw in the first stream very yeah. briefly. There were more Scorn family within Rome's Republic, right? Yes. Here it's a bit more contained. We'll settle that in a little bit. Okay. You can also see that because we have a general, we also have the thing that our ruler is unmarried. We can solve the Scorn family thing with either of these. So let's go to the Scorn families and say the Sostrich thread is probably... Hmm. These guys. Yes. We can't marry either of them, but this is a tactician. He's a What's person. a tactician exactly? Look at this guy. He is uh, honest. Good for him. Humble. Oh, wow. That and kind of cliche. Energetic. Oh, yes. But he's also a really, really good commander. If so the little genius of the family, basically. Yeah, he's just a bad <laughs> commander. Very bad commander indeed. Okay. Yeah, so we'll... What should we do about them? Should we, we just do something? The, we'll, we'll just ignore him. Because it, one family, he's not going to have any power base. So if we go to and marry our ruler, okay. let's see if we are any females here. We can go to the maggots. And not the maggots. No, maggots. Oh, maggots. We'll, okay. we'll marry her to the ruler. <laughs> Fifi maggots. Well, we can also buy a bunch of inventions. You have different ones you can select from. There's no random picking. Uh, these ones are unlocked from uh, your the, the tech level. So each of them... Uh, unlocks three new inventions. Okay, so these guys are going to research more and more new innovations for us, and yeah. we will get to pick them. Yeah. Okay, and they cost 50 civic power. Yeah, each. Okay. So we, when you're getting like, uh, when you get the new civic advance, which uh, uh, depends on the skill of that guy, or martial advance, which depends on the skill of that guy, oh, right. the martial av advances give us uh, uh, more morale. Oh, uh, nice. The civic ones gives us more commerce income and cheaper wages because wages go up all the time so that's good that means more money for us because yeah. we're spending less on the person that are uh, in charge of various things oratory gives us plus two civilization level each of them pretty and cool the religious ones they give us a higher power on our omens oh that's and pretty all nice of them give us three different inventions we can pick so if we're going to this starting statute of egypt we have these natural borders and we want to strengthen them we don't want our army stuck in alexandria all the time so we're gonna create a new unit first of all we take the camel cavalry there's a lot of like desert here where, where mm -hmm. barbarians can come from yep. so move on to ammon okay we call this one the that's what we call oh we can rename them that's pretty pretty yeah, nice we call the this one the western stratus Okay, so uh, camels, what do they do? Do they move fast? Do they have any edge against yeah, any... Yeah, they're kind of faster than most units. I but can see that they're very... They're, they are quite efficient against chariots, archer, and light infantry too. That's pretty nice. Yes. So we put the leader there on th these guys. We don't need someone super powerful? No, we just put the Sostenid guy, so they will be eventually be slightly more happy that fine family. So again, here you have uh, light infantry and light cavalry that yeah. can move faster, right? Yeah. Am I correct? Cool. We're putting this one. It's a pretty loyal guy. Poplar is semi-competent. I don't want my ruler because I want my ruler to be in charge of the... The main army. Yes. And so regarding loyalty here, the, the goal is to have generals that are always loyal to you because if not, they're going to be against you or what's going to happen there? Yes, they can start civil wars if they become disloyal. So we're going to make it even better for this one. Because if we're looking here, we have a... Population spread out. It's a desert. Mm -hmm. Moun here is a place where I think would be a nice place for a lot of fortresses. So we're going to spend a lot of our power for the next, which is basically a few years supply of power. Okay. And move the population. We're going to move all the slaves because it's cheap to move slaves. We're going to move every slave we oh, can poor find. Oh, slaves. They were just hanging there, man. 
No, we're going to have a larger population in Maun. You see Maun growing. Oh, oh right. The, the city is actually growing bigger as you move people around. Yes. Oh, that's pretty nifty. We can move the tribes, tribes man too. as well. To Maun. Will you suffer like any drawbacks from just emptying your provinces? You get uh, less research, less... Uh, oh, okay. So you so still have to think carefully when you're emptying provinces. Yes. I guess that since it's Egypt and it's so large and big, you can afford just two. Now we can build two buildings here because we're at fifth in population. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, and we're going to build two fortresses. So we get the fortress here to block up. And you can accumulate those fortresses. Yes. Pretty the higher cool. pop I want to have a fort here to block, so they have to go here and siege. A second army in Rafia, so that whenever someone comes in here to siege, because they can't get past it, I'll just attack them. Nice. With a, with a, with an army that's filled of light infantry and light cavalry, so they're not taking quite. They're not going to take that much of attrition. So I have a large army to just smack there. Nice. And then Pretty if cool. they get past this one, mm -hmm. I'm putting this little place here as my huge fortress, uh, which was basically huh. where the Egyptians had the fortress historically. So I guess the more fortresses you have, the more bonus you're going to have there too, to defend that, to get that fort. Yes. They will have to spend more attrition and more units in order to try and get them. That's yes. super, super interesting. Wait, you mentioned loyalty earlier. Yes, I did. So you may have noticed here that we have something called disloyal characters in... Is it bad if I did not notice it before? <laughs> Melager. How do you pronounce Malay? 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 Malaga? I, I can't Ladi? pronounce anything. If it's not in Swedish, it's... I, well, I can't even pronounce Swedish. He's a little bit disloyal. He's a pretender. He wants to become ruler because he's not the number one in the inheritance. Huh. There's a small, some small portraits here. That is kind of new. This is uh, the support that he thinks that Ptolemy Corona should be ruler and himself. He obviously thinks that he should be the ruler. So he's a pretender. Man. He's a jealous guy as well. Can't we like assassinate him? You can't assassinate people in your own country. You could oh, try to bribe him Ooh, and nice. make him more loyal. Let's do that. Yeah, he's a little bit more loyal, but uh, <laughs> well, not, hopefully not enough time. for him to go for someone and else. And can you bribe, me, bribe him like over and over again? Or? No, you can't bribe. Uh, you can only bribe someone once a year. So let's go to the government. Here's the monarchy things. Oh, wow. Very different because, from um, last week's stream. So we have like the current ruler. Okay. The ruler is always the same. Uh, you have uh, the next heir. Oh, which is our uh, son. Yeah. And how the score he has for becoming that. Which is pretty good. We have uh, eight different positions here. Oh, with nice tooltips to do, Team CD. So we have the successors. Uh, we have uh, Ptolemy Caraunas. They're all Ptolemies. Yeah, he's not loyal, but he's the primary heir, so his loyalty is ticking up. He has the succession score of 100 because he's the first son of the ruler. 1,000, more like 20 yeah. people in the country is currently supporting him. Obviously, it's the legit one. Or, well, he has support from 20 people who's not pretenders. Uh, this little kid, Philadelphus. He's already pretending to be a kid. Wow, he's very arrogant for a kid. <laughs> he's also a pretender. Uh, he's uh, kind of loyal. <laughs> it just looks so funny that when we're processing stuff for a little four-year-old. Dad, I'm uh, well, going to be disloyal to he, you. He's, he's named Philadelphia, so I think he's a Flyers fan. <laughs> no, nobody's supporting him. And he's the problematic, egotistical imbecile that really wants to take our throne. Yeah, but he's uh, okayly loyal for now, but it's going to take a while. Uh, just to... because we send him pocket money. And there are no supporters. But what's happening? It's like, if this one, if he has low loyalty when uh, their old daddy Ptolemy is out there, dies, he's going to be like, okay, I have money. Okay. I'm spending the money recruiting an army. Uh oh. And if, so when a ruler dies in a monarchy, you will get the succession crisis. It's not the war that completely starts, but they will be building a power base and. He'll get supporters because he's going to spend money on someone to get friends, to get right, and uh, people to like him more. And then he'll basically start a civil war. Civil war. Oh, Jesus. And you know why he's unhappy and he's a pretender? Uh, why? Tell me. Let's see. Let's Obviously, see. he's jealous. Oh, but that's he, like, why. If, if you're 70 year old and you have this hair, you're obviously he's jealous. He doesn't have the... Oh, come on. Bold. Can't we just like smack the jealousy out of him? Boom, boom. We, could, we, we, could, we could try that. You can read here and explain. Well, let's just 
Le All right. Legitimacy. <clears throat> legitimacy is an indication of how well regarded your ruling dynasty is. Positive legitimacy will increase the maximum loyalty of your characters from 50 up to 100. Negative legitimacy will cause all characters in your realm to lose loyalty on a monthly basis. Our current legitimacy is at 100. Gives us this nice bonus. Plus 50 Oof. to max loyalty. The Ooh, attraction nice. for people on how they view the premier here is so our plus oldest son. Yes. Nice. So if we go to this little guy here, Archeatros, you'll see that uh, he has a... Uh, Positive legitimacy plus 20%. Yes. Pretty, pretty cool. So that's why these guys, otherwise it would just be plus 32. And if this guy had been like, if this guy's loyalty had tanked, mm -hmm. and our legitimacy tanked, these guys would have gotten far more support. Nice. That's pretty cool. And what's the number right there next to the legitimacy? That's, That's the an next ruler's Ooh. legitimacy. Legitimacy changes whenever you get a new ruler. Um, the base number is 60, then up to 20 if your religious unity is... Is pretty strong. So yeah. the more your country has the same religion, the more your pops have the same religion, yeah. the bigger the bonus. Yes. And then uh, every single person that's supporting another pretender gives you a malice and then you get yes. minus four. And obviously these guys they're preferring themselves as rulers so they're impacting that one a little bit. Really but if more people them. start supporting them, we're gonna be in trouble. Ah. If I we take forward now, let's sure. go speed five for a little bit so we can see what's happening and oh we get an alliance offer from Sir Nike. Let's see where, where Sir are Nike they, these is. Guys? That's the uh, country on our border here. They're a desert they have not much manpower, they kind of like semi poor yeah. cohorts. Eight. I mean, they could make a nice buffer zone, right? Yeah, I mean, we only have one ally and we can have five because we're a great power. Ah, uh, let's go for it. Yeah, they were nice. They asked us. I mean, are we going to want to march troops over here to conquer? Yeah. I want the rich heartlands there. There's Phoenician, <laughs> there's Phoenician cities there. They're rich. rich as hell. Time to raid. The dangerous thing with the alliances in this game compared to other games is that defensive alliances, if someone attacks you, you always join the war. You're not declining alliances at defensive wars. That's pretty cool. So you can always trust people that to join. To uh, join into your war if you're yeah. being attacked. I was going to talk about a little bit about this army. They're marching. They're marching through the desert. Mm -hmm. And the desert is like, these are camels, so they're not all that bad. But we're getting... Attrition from the desert? Yeah. It's like, the supply limit there is shit. It's like two and three oh, or wow. so. So we're already, because the supply limit is only two, our army cannot be sustained, hence yeah. we have attrition. Yes, and a desert always gives plus one. Okay. So no matter what you're doing, you always get a... Uh, you get always get attrition down there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so let's tick forward. Oh. Tick, 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 tick. The Sir Nike now, they want to uh, import cloth from us. We're not exporting cloth already. Okay. So we can do that and we get a nice bonus. So we will have a bonus for our technology and research. Yes. That's pretty nice. Now I also ticked in so that we are not going to trade away anything if we lose our capital. Oh, so we still keep our surpluses within our capital to yes. make sure we because, have enough. Uh, because if you have a surplus in your capital, you get certain bonus. So we have that That's in pretty rain, nice. Okay. glass, vegetable. Glass gives us religious tech cost. Vegetables, cheaper to move slaves. Okay. Which is good for us. Fish, happier free men. Are we exporting grain so we get manpower? Exporting mm -hmm. cloth so we get the research points, which is good. We're going back to technology, you see that our growth fair is ticking fine. That's pretty in nice. In 457, we'll get that one. Religious in 457 as well. And we have an envoy from the Hellenistic great power of Seleucid, which is... What do they want? Import gemstones from one of our promises. I'm like... <laughs> where our civilization level is increasing. So civilization, mm -hmm. remind me really quickly, what does the civilization level do exactly? It's a, it's a cap in your country. Okay. And then different provinces have different civilization levels. If they're below the civilization level in your country, as it mm -hmm. says here, it will slowly grow up. Civilization level immediately impacts your population growth in a province. Okay. It uh, reduces the barbarian growth. Not it too makes bad. citizens really happy, free men slightly happier, and tribesmen absolutely Hey. Oh god damn, time to convert the, the, the bloody tribesmen. Yeah, damn. well, but we could promote the tribesmen. So let's promote our tribesmen. That cost us 10... Uh, Religion power. Yeah, we, where do we want... It's like, yeah, we can have tribesmen on the borders, but not in the delta. Exterminate, exterminate. Yeah. It was not the genocide button. It was like 
promote them, give them money and... Right, we're promoting them to a higher status, yes. actually. Oh, well, there you go. They have a promotion. Oh! Oh, wow, what's that? This is the, one of the cool events in the series, so in the game. the wars of the Adoki, let's go with the Adoki. Yeah. The Adoki, chat, please feel free to burn me. Big okay, move. so the wars of the Adoki, it's a nice little description of like okay. how all those friends were uh, turned on each other after the, uh, Alexander had accidentally died. Uh, so you have, uh, and when you get the events here, yes. uh, you get the uh, portraits about the uh, characters that are impacted, the family name of them, so you can see like this is especially good when you have like internal events mm -hmm. so you can say which family is impacting then you can go tooltip and see like who else is a member of this family so you can make that's good super decisions great. that's really great to keep track and of course flags because who here does not like flags flags Real are good flags. um ptolemy here this is us seleucus and cutter our big friend yes Antigone, the rival. He's supposed to be one-eyed because you can see on the picture here. That oh yeah, this, in, the, uh, in the picture he's actually one-eyed. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Do you think we can get that in the game? I think we're getting that. The portrait should be mm, able to. That would be super sweet. Cassander. Cassander is the one that uh, has the reputation of being responsible for the death of uh, Alexander's, Alexander's son. Alexander's son. Yes. And there. Lysimachus here is Alchemakids. He's the ruler of Thrace. This used to be like Alexander's empire. From here somewhere. Mm-hmm. All of Greece and Egypt and so it was a huge empire. Wow. They split into basically five major players and much of smaller states. Cassander took control of Macedonia. Phrase is Lysimachus. Phrygia is Antigone. 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 Yeah, in fr has the Phrygians. Seleucids have formed the Seleucid Empire. And then Egypt, Egypt is Ptolemy. Ptolemy. Uh, we, this is a great event. It's like we get claims on all of everything from like Greece, Assyria to Persia. So we gain claims. What are claims? Claims exactly? allow us to declare war. Okay. Without, uh, it gives us a casus belli. We can declare war without having a stability hit. A casus belli being a justification from war, and that yes. comes from Latin or something. Casus belli is Latin. Case for war. Cool. But these claims, they will disappear when this ruler dies. So we can get claims from events, and we can also fabricate claims ourselves. Yes. That's also an FT3. Everyone is asking for the end date of the game. Uh, do we have one new one? I think the date is technically when uh, Augustus, Augustus uh, becomes uh, Emperor. And okay. then after that, there's no more Imperators in the game, actually. Imperator is a title you give to Roman commanders. Oh, hell, I learned something. I, I yeah. wasn't aware of that. That's super interesting. Okay. I want to build my armies a little bit stronger, the core armies. I'm adding uh, a few marchers, a few more heavy infantry. Mm -hmm. Should we pick this? Egypt stream next time, Johan, because initially we had plans to showcase other things, but I think we're on a pretty solid run there. Yeah, let's try an Egypt stream run next week. Cool. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. It was a blast. Thank you so much, Johan. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.